I'm Andrew Jones of Climate Interactive, and I'll show you En-ROADS, the global simulator that we built with MIT Sloan. It helps people see how actions, such as, say, a carbon price, affects outcomes such as temperature. On the left is the main graph that shows from 2000 out to 2100 various sources of energy. I'll reset here. You can see coal, you can see oil, natural gas in blue, renewables, bioenergy, nuclear, and a new technology. On the right is temperature change from 2000 out to 2100 with the final 2100 temperature in Celsius and in Fahrenheit. At the bottom are sliders, not just carbon price, but many other actions that can be tested, such as energy efficiency in transport, energy efficiency in buildings and industry, taxing coal, imagining a new technology, growing more trees, cutting deforestation, electrifying, cutting methane, and other actions such as carbon removal. You click the buttons and thousands of equations in a system dynamics model calculate the impact. Our team at Climate Interactive and MIT Sloan built En-ROADS using the best available science on climate, energy economics, land use, and agriculture with data from the IEA, the United Nations, the EIA, and the IPCC. And we compare our results against the larger disaggregated integrated assessment models, such as those in the Energy Modeling Forum and the SSPs. The purpose of the En-ROAD simulator is to support and frame better conversations about how to address climate change. We embed the simulator in a workshop in a game called the Climate Action Simulation and in student exercises, all that are available at climateinteractive.org. En-ROADS works in two modes. In the first mode, is designed for a business person, a policymaker, a community member, a climate leader, student can test various solutions to climate and quickly see the outcome in the long term. In the second, an advanced user may want to set a more specific carbon price, say exactly, say $75 a ton phasing in over a certain amount of time. They also may want to see many of the assumptions in the model underneath it. Some of the other interesting features in the model include in the advanced view, the information button where one can see examples of this policy, the big message, some of the key dynamics, co-benefits, equity considerations, and the slider settings. One can also dig even more deeply into the overall user guide and the 400 page reference guide for the model. One can also replay the last change. The button here undoes the action or redoes the action so one can see what is the relative impact or you can do it as a movie by hitting replay last change and then letting the simulation automatically play out. One of the more interesting views that one can view is the uh, Kaya graphs. It shows population, consumption, energy intensity of GDP, carbon intensity of energy, all being multiplied together to give you CO2 emissions from energy shows some of the other assumptions regarding the drivers of growth in an interesting way. The home button resets all the graphs and brings you back here. After you make a scenario that you like, say you're able to get all these things to change and you can get all the way down to below two degrees or 1.5 and you like that scenario, you hit the button and you can copy your scenario and send it to somebody else to share your vision for addressing climate. Hit this button and all the sliders, sliders reset. At this point, temperature is the graph on the right. We often find it helpful instead to show greenhouse gas 
net emissions. When that is changed, one can see greenhouse gas net emissions graph changes a good bit more and one can see more of the impacts than just by changing by looking at the temperature graph. Even more advanced users may want to see the area graph, which shows all of those actions stacked and shows many of the negative emissions below the zero line over on the right here. Speaking of the carbon removal and negative emissions, it can be helpful to see that underneath in the advanced view, one can use detailed settings and individually set actions on carbon removal, such as direct air capture, bioenergy, mineralization, and see all of these actions one by one as they stack on top of each other. Many users also appreciate changing assumptions in the model. Many of the important assumptions in the climate sector, for example, such as a sensitivity to the doubling of carbon can be changed here. Many of the other assumptions are available for changing as well. Many of the fossil fuel levers have not just a tax setting or subsidy setting, but one can also formally and fully restrict investment in new infrastructure in some year. Say, stop building new coal infrastructure in 2025, 2045. Also, one can reduce utilization of coal or other fossil fuels in any year. One can turn on settings such as playing sounds. So when things get better, you hear a happy noise and worse, a sad noise. One can also see a review of all the actions and the outcomes here in actions and outcomes view with a list of all the actions that you've taken and then your results over here on the bottom. Let's look at the business as usual scenario here in En-ROADS. Think of it as a plausible scenario that is the starting point for your experimentation in the simulator. It's not our forecast of where we think things will be headed. In this scenario, temperature rises from 2000 out to 2100. Here we are around somewhere in 2020, around 1.4 degrees C, passing 1.5, out here passing 2 degrees, all the way up to about 4.1 in 2100. Why is that happening? Well, the main reason is because greenhouse gas net emissions are going up and up and up. This is the emissions of from coal, oil, and gas, but also methane, nitrous oxide, F gases. Why is that happening? The main drivers can be seen under here, under Kaya graphs. Let's look carefully at these. Here's population. Here it is at 7.7 .7 billion or so today heading up in this middle UN projection to about 11 billion. The second big driver is consumption, goods and services, GDP per person around the world, growing and growing over time. Multiply these two numbers together and you get overall GDP. Then there's the energy intensity of GDP. That is, how much energy does it take to deliver a trillion dollars of value? It's coming down as we shift from manufacturing towards service industry, and as technologies uh, from in the manufacturing and motors and cars and lighting and HVAC systems and everything gets more efficient, and we design more efficient transportation systems, gets more and more efficient. That is, it takes less energy to deliver money, deliver value over time. Multiply all three of these together, and you get total energy use on Earth in exajoules per year. The carbon intensity of energy is how much, how many megatons of carbon dioxide get emitted per unit energy. That is, 
Uh, does it come from coal, oil, gas, renewables, nuclear? And that will dictate uh, the energy, excuse me, the carbon intensity of the energy supply. Multiply all four together, and that gives you this last number, which is carbon emissions from energy. So in this world, you can see that it's going up. Why is it going up? It's because the growth back here is stronger than the uh, reductions in these second two factors. So on net, we have more and more emissions from energy. Add in the carbon dioxide from land use and the other gases, and you get 4.1 degrees. Now you can see the other interesting graphs that can show you those other gases here in this graph, greenhouse gas net emissions by gas. I just show you the Kaya drivers here of energy CO2. That's the black area. And of course, things are stacked on top of each other. Underneath that area is land use CO2 from deforestation. And then on top of it is the F gases like HFCs and FS6. On top of that, this big blue swath is carbon, excuse me, methane, CH4, and then nitrous oxide, mostly from fertilizer on top of it. So this is... These are the main drivers of this scenario, and it's a plausible future that you can compare against. Some of the more specifics that within the system are the, the behavior of various energy supplies. Here in brown, you can see coal growing through the century. It doesn't peak like some of the other ones because there's a lot of coal in the world, and absent major interventions, it's likely to have a growth over the century. In red is oil, which starts to get more expensive as we run into supply limitations in the latter half of the century. Uh, fossil gas or natural gas here is in blue, and it starts to slow its growth as we run into some limits. Here, wind and solar, renewable energy in green, bioenergy from burning or processing biomass trees here in pink, nuclear from uranium here, and then down here at zero is a new technology like thorium fission or nuclear fusion. So here's the base run, the business as usual run against which you can do experiments and see what would happen if we change things. I'd like to now introduce to you all of the various levers that you're able to change to do experiments in En-ROADS to create a different future. Over here, you can change coal in three ways. You can tax it uh, or subsidize it in some way, but underneath, be sure to look and see that there are other things that you can do. You can stop building new infrastructure. You can cut utilization. You can also imagine uh, carbon capture and storage as some of your possibilities. You can do the same with oil, as you can with coal. And with natural gas, you can do all of that as well. You can also reduce or change the leakage rate from methane. With bioenergy, you have many of the same controls. Here with renewable energy, you can make many of the same changes of taxing or subsidizing, but you can't ban infrastructure in the same way. You can, however, change the cost of storage to imagine what would be different if we had uh, breakthroughs in storage capacity. Similar controls are possible with nuclear. With new technology, you can just imagine that a new technology emerges, or underneath, you can pick what year that happens by using the detailed settings and setting a specific breakthrough year, like 2028. With carbon price, you can set a one value, or you can have it climb over time with many controls that are underneath. Energy efficiency, think of this as vehicles and transportation systems. Uh, you can control these factors either just in general terms or by specifying an exact percent per year improvement rate to the energy intensity of new capital. This is in transport. Similar controls are available with energy efficiency in buildings and industry. You can also electrify. This just drives increases or decreases in overall electrification. You can imagine a lot more electrification, or actually, what if we get even less than we're seeing right now? Same with electrification of buildings and industry. This is 
he, uh, heating and HVAC systems driven by electricity as opposed to gas and oil and coal. Two assumptions here, population, which you can change within the range of the UN scenarios, and economic growth, which you can shift up and down. You can actually explore that by region if you're interested in what's going on in different parts of the world. For deforestation, you're just driving the reduction in uh, the uh, emissions from that sector here, 5.7% per year. With methane you can, and other, you can break it into two areas. You can look at agriculture and waste emissions separate from energy and industry emissions of those other gases. With afforestation, you can grow trees, change many of the factors went about how long it takes for such practices to diffuse around the world. With carbon removal, you can either just change everything together or you can look at them one by one where you use detailed settings and change specifically BEX, direct air capture, mineralization, ag, soil, carbon, and biochar. There are also, of course, many changes in the assumptions that you can uh, change to uh, explore some of the key parameters that we made assumptions for. I'd like to give you some tips about how to use En-ROADS in order to do experiments. The main idea is this. Uh, it's tempting to just move a slider and see what the result is. It's very important that you don't do that. It's important that you take the time to think before you move one of the sliders. So say you're imagining that you're going to tax natural gas. Before you hit the button, it's important to think what is gonna happen in the model. In this case, you could think, well, Natural gas is going to be more expensive. This blue line of gas, maybe it won't grow as fast. Maybe it'll actually go down. So you think, that's what I think is going to happen. What's going to happen over here? Well, we won't have as much energy CO2 because we're not burning gas, and that temperature is going to go down. So think, ideally, write it down or tell somebody else what you think is going to happen. Make the change. And then when you make the change, it's good to use these buttons where I'm going to replay and then see, did it actually happen? And I see, oh, I was right. The blue line went down. Look, it's going down. And over here on the right, we have a small decrease in that black area and temperature goes down a little bit. But then you should explore, well, what else is going on and see if there's surprises. Well, I see the brown line going up. We have more coal. That's interesting. And the green line for wind and solar, there's some compensating that's going on. Take the time to think about what's going to happen and then take the time to notice what the surprises are, because that's how you actually learn something new. Overall, we hope that we can, you can use En-ROADS to do experiments to help you learn what is the impact of a policy such as that, and then also what is the collective impact of a wide range of policies and actions around the world that might be successful at getting us much closer to our climate goals, much lower temperature off into the future. Overall, we hope that the simulator is embedded in games and workshops to help people think more clearly about how to address this challenge and have better conversations with others. For more information, go to climateinteractive.org. That's climateinteractive.org.